Sorry, well actually I'm not sorry. For all of you, the real estate market's going to crash, doom and gloom folks. It's time for you to collect your belongings, maybe put on your jacket because this party, well it's about over. Oh, you don't believe me? Okay, let's talk some data. But first, hi, it's Jeff Chubb. I'm a retired investment banker turned real estate agent that sold more than a thousand homes and I'm one of the top agents in the state of Massachusetts. If you have any questions about the market or are thinking about making a move, then I would love to chat with you. Visit me at www.youtuberealestateagent.com. So it looks like this is going to be more of a small minor correction than a crash. And yes, it's important to say that it really depends on location. Some markets are going to perform better than others. But these doom and gloom folks have been saying the entire market was going to crash for close to a year. And I'm tired of it, which I've never really gotten, by the way. Could you imagine if a meteorologist jumped on TV today telling you that the average temperature in the U.S. was going to be 64 degrees? That'd just be stupid. But all these media folks just can't comprehend that like the weather, real estate's local. So what happened for me to come out and start screaming this from the rooftop? The financial markets are now fully pricing in a quarter point interest rate hike for February 1st, as inflation has really started to slow. Not a half point, a quarter point. And that means that the tightening, well, it's coming to an end. The toughest days are behind us as we head into the most active market where demand naturally increases, which is the spring market. Why is the the Fed slowing down? Why are markets cheering? It's because inflation, it's starting to cool. The softer producer price index and retail sales have helped make this a foregone conclusion with now multiple Fed chairs coming out calling for a quarter point hike. All that hype, all that doom and gloom, yes, some markets did get crushed. Those were the markets that were seeing just stupid gains. They crashed and we'll see some more crashing back to reality. The institutional buyers who were very much one of the leading causes for these crazy prices have now gotten their butts kicked and have left the space and are, well, licking their wounds. And with that in mind, I personally hope that interest rates do not go back to those near historic lows that we saw previously. Oh, you still don't believe me? Well, take a look at this article I saw this morning. Is the housing market recession nearing a demand trough? Experts detect a little rise in activity. If only these people watched my weekly updates. I've been talking about this for the last couple weeks. Then again, mention the pickup this week as well buyers are back. So for our market in Massachusetts, my fear has now become a snap back to those crazy days. Remember, I have been saying that our market is fragile and I've meant it. When you compare our inventory levels to the last 17 years, we currently have the third lowest amount of inventory and dare I say the third lowest in history due to inventory levels not really being tracked all that well before the MLS migrated over to the internet. Inventory is low. Even a small rush in buyer demand could tip this thing really quickly. It's like the real estate market is Rocky and Rocky IV. I mean, it just took the Fed's best punches, literally blow after blow after blow for 12 months. And like Rocky, the real estate market fell to the canvas, but it took the Fed's best shots and got right back up. So the million dollar question becomes, will I change my prediction that the average home price in Massachusetts won't go up or down substantially and ultimately be a flat year. Nope. And here's why. The Fed wildcard is about to be removed, but we now still have the economy wildcard. How bad will this recession be? Well, Microsoft just announced they were laying off 10,000 people yesterday. This is after huge layoffs at Goldman Sachs, Google, and Amazon. Companies are trimming, and most likely, their trimming has really only began to start. And so far, these jobs have been white collar jobs, and this trend is expected to continue. With the service sector still being tight on labor, it's expected that this is gonna be a white collar job recession. But the issue lies in that trickle down effect. I tried to find the article that I read some time ago where one white collar job layoff will affect three to five blue collar jobs, but I just couldn't find it. But it does make sense. Generally speaking, they have more disposable income. If they have no job, then they're not out there buying cars and maybe they have to lay off their cleaning person, which will have a lag effect, but it will ultimately end up affecting the economy. Also, if people are seeing their neighbors get laid off, then they may be more cautious in their own buying habits, especially in big purchases like houses and cars. So yes, I will almost certainly say there will be no housing crash here in Massachusetts, that is. I know there are some other markets and parts of the country that are going through some pain, but the good news is that that end, it might be near. It's looking like more and more the case that the best time to buy was actually yesterday, and the second best time just might be now. Because when interest rates start coming down, that's when the dam could break and we could go right back to where we started in 2021. Five, 
four, three, two, one, and cue the affordability, folks. I hate to tell you, but housing got cheaper last year. Factor in the inflation rate and housing affordability actually increased for home buyers. And if you don't think factoring in the inflation rate really makes sense, then I invite you to look up how they get to the GDP growth calculation number. And if the average inflation stays in the three to 4% range in 2023 with housing prices staying flat, then that means housing affordability only got better. I appreciate you consider subscribing and I'm really curious to know what your thoughts are. Put them in the comments section below. Has your view changed in the last recent weeks or maybe month or two? And if you're thinking about buying or selling a home, then I invite you to reach out to me. I would love to chat with you and help you if I can. My information is in the description below. So until next time.